What's up, guys? Uh, it's Mr. Dean from Streets of Rage Online, Brawls Avenue. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about my thoughts on Streets of Rage 4 so far. Um, I made a post on, or a tweet, whatever, on uh, Twitter recently saying that I'm a little bit concerned about the game so far. Uh, and I guess you guys wanted to know what I was talking about in regards to that. Um, it's not like a uh, huge deal, like it's not a make or break kind of thing for me right now where I'm just like absolutely not going to touch a game or something like that. Um, but uh, basically, um, reading the articles that I've been reading on so far, uh, I've been reposting them on the Twitter and Discord. Uh, I actually need to work on reposting them on Facebook as well. Um, it's really more about what's being said about the game so far and um, the things that are being talked about in regards to the actual project and the process behind it than anything else. Uh, most people are kind of really worried about things like the um, the visuals or uh, whether whether or not uh, Yuzo Koshiro is going to be on on board or, or whatnot and stuff like that. I, I'm really not concerned about stuff like that to be honest with you. The visuals are good enough for me. Um, you know, like I said, as long as I can see what's going on the screen and, you know, it's not too much of uh, a thing where I can't see what I'm doing, I don't have a problem with that. Um, as far as Yuzo being on board, I'd love for him to be on board, but if he isn't, it's not a, you know, it's not really a huge deal to me because I feel like, you know, there has been enough composers out there that could capture the same kind of magic that Yuzo has done. And, uh, and in my opinion, um, it kind of stunts the growth of other composers when, you know, all we want to do is go back to older composers and stuff like that. Like, would Telopes be, you know, where he's at right now if, you know, the original guy who did the music for Sonic, the Sonic trilogy, did the music for Sonic Mania? You know, we wouldn't have a situation where we have T-Lopes, you know, now everybody knows who T-Lopes is, um, you know, and he gets he gets a, a chance to be in the spotlight and actually, um, you know, work his magic because of that. So, I'm not down if, if Yuzo's not on board. It, it's looking like he's going to be on board anyway. You know, I'm, like I said, I'm not worried about that kind of thing. Uh, but even if he wasn't, it, it would be a chance for somebody else to get on board and show what they can do and possibly become another Yuzo. So that type of thing doesn't bother me. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to get into was the stuff that's being talked about in the articles and stuff because that is what has bothered me the most. Uh, like I said, the visuals are great in my opinion. Uh, seeing Axel and Blaze's idol poses in motion, I think it's going to be great in motion. Uh, the backgrounds look pretty cool. Hopefully they add more to it, you know. Um, but I'll get into that at a different point. This is just some off-the-cuff stuff that I'm going to be posting on my uh, personal YouTube and Twitter. Um, this is not going to be for Streets of Rage Online's YouTube. I've actually got some other videos planned for that. Um, but my concern is that in a lot of these articles, we are getting a lot of uh, PR answers, honestly. Uh, and it's... And it's it bothers me because it reminds me of Sonic 4. Uh, when you were getting interviews for Sonic 4, we would get all these answers that are just typical. Uh, yeah, we're listening to the community. Yeah, we're making a, a sequel uh, type of thing, and they're not really they're not really saying stuff to me that um, that really tells us the direction of the project. And that's my that's that's my concern right now. It's because when it really comes down to it, when it really boils down to it, it's not going to be the visuals or the music or anything else. It's going to be how this game plays. Because even if they have Yuzo on board, even if the visuals are amazing, it's not going to matter if the game's boring. It's not going to matter if the game sucks and people don't want to play it. You know, none of that crap's going to matter. And that's that's what is concerning me right now is the you know how is the game going to play, and every time we get into a question about the gameplay in these articles, it's always some kind of dancing around, <laughs> and um, you know, uh, and, and then of course you know just recently, 
Uh, there was an article that just came out where the guy doing the interview called Skate one of the uh, enemies. <laughs> he said he was a, a thug on rollerblades and asked if he was returning. I, I by the way, uh, if you if you're watching this guy, I'm not making I'm not making fun of you or trying to shit on you or anything. I was just poking fun with the tweet. Uh, I hope you guys know I was just poking fun. I wasn't trying to shit on the guy about it. Uh, it, it. It was it was funny. It was funny though. It was funny. I wasn't trying to shit on him about it. I was just poking fun. Uh, I don't expect people to remember every detail about about Streets of Rage, but it, it's just one of those things. Like you see, you see, kind of see it, and you, you kind of have to make a jab at it. Um, but no, no. Um, but in that interview, that's not actually what bothered me. What bothered me in the interview is that. The guy that he was interviewed, the dev himself, basically just told us we're not seeing Skate. <laughs> and yeah, it's not fully confirmed. He could have just said it to kind of throw us off. He might, Skate could be in the game, who knows. But the way he answered, he was just kind of like, yeah, I'm more of a skateboard guy. So no, yeah, he's not in the trailer. And I don't know, it, maybe the answer, he gave the answer because he was just kind of blowing off the answer because... Uh, of the fact that the guy was already wrong about who Skate was in the first place, so he could have just been blowing it off. But we get answers like that in, in the in the interviews, and um, I talked about this on Discord too. My biggest issue right now is that that they're still going on about Streets of Fury in the in the Guard Crush engine, like it's the best thing that happened in beat 'em ups. And look, I'm not gonna shit on Streets of Fury. It's a fun game to me. I, I have fun playing it. It's not Streets of Rage though, um, and I'm a little concerned that that they um, that they have been saying in these articles that they've been work on they've been working on that very engine for ten years, and in one of the articles they specifically said they worked with the Streets of Rage community, and I'm like I'm I'm looking around the streets of rage community. I'm like, uh, did did anybody did anybody actually work with these guys? Did they, did they talk? They they talk to you? Did they approach you? Did... <laughs> we're we're all confused. We're like, uh, who in the community did they talk to? Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, like, like I said, I, I I can't wait until I actually play the game to see for myself. But if they have been working on the engine for ten years and it and it turns out to be great, I'm happy about it. But all they have to show as far as the engine goes is Streets of Fury and Streets of Fury EX. And I've played both. I have Streets of Fury on 360. I have EX on Steam. There isn't a, a huge gap of a difference between those two games. So um, as far as improvements and stuff go, you know, it's just pretty much in the, up in the air. They're, they don't have any other games to show us, okay, yeah, no, they actually have been improving the engine. It's just word of mouth right now. But my problem is right now is that they keep talking about the Guard Crush engine in Streets of Fury like it's the only beat em up to have ever existed since Streets of Rage came out. And this isn't the case. You know, I'm concerned about this because Streets of Fury, there's so many things that like Streets of Fury does that is pretty fun, but they do things that are really messed up too, like the juggling system. That's the biggest worry for me. They talk about this juggling system over and over and over in, in these interviews and the, the juggling in Streets of Fury is not good sorry I, 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 I have to say it it's not good it's not a good system in, in, in Streets of Fury when you can juggle a, an enemy for 30 seconds straight without putting too much effort into it that's a problem to me honestly um, but there's another game out there specifically that um, that does juggling right and, then, and not only does it do juggling right, it does it in the same format of Streets of Rage's system. And that game is called Fighting Rage. And I'm going to always talk about that game. Uh, Fighting Rage does juggling amazing in that game. You have to be skilled to juggle an enemy. Like, if you're going to be juggle, if you're going to do like, if you're going to able to, if you can juggle an enemy 30 seconds in that game, you're good at that game. Um, but that is my concern, is that they don't talk about their other sources for beat-em-ups. They're not telling us, like, oh, okay, but, you know, we're taking inspiration from, uh, you know, uh, even if they just want to, even if they want to BS us, like a lot of these other indie developers that do beat-em-ups and, and always want to th toss in Double Dragon and Final Fight as their, their resource, even that, it, 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 
give us something. Like, let us know, like, dude, what beat em ups are you playing while you're developing this game? Like, I get that you guys are looking at the original trilogy, and, and that's, for the most part, that's all you really need to at least get the core values down. You know, so that, I'm not, I'm not even concerned about the core values. I think they're actually going to get that stuff right. But the stuff that you're adding, that's what I'm concerned about. Like, when you're adding stuff, like juggling and stuff, you don't just throw that stuff in there. Um, and the biggest problem with the beat em up genre in general is that when somebody adds juggling, that's what they do. They just throw it in there. They don't think about how it works. It's the same thing with gunplay, too. They just throw guns in there. They don't think about how the gunplay should actually work with the combos or the, the fighting system or, or anything. They just toss it in there because it's a cool thing to have. Um... And that is, I mean, that is my biggest concern with these articles is that we're getting a lot of, of PR talk. It's a, it's a lot of, oh, we work with the community. Oh, we're listening to the community. Oh, this and that. <sighs> yeah, but for the most part, all these articles that you guys are doing are with journals that, that hardly remember Streets of Rage. They don't, they don't know the intricacies of like how the systems and stuff like that work, you know, and, uh, like I said, I'm still looking forward to doing that one-on-one uh, -on -one with Ben. You know, Ben actually seems pretty cool. I talked to him on Twitter as well as um, Stephanie. Uh, I talked to Stephanie a little bit through the emails and stuff like that. They seem like cool people. You know, they seem pretty passionate about this project. I look forward to talking to them. But it kind of sucks to me that, to see that, you know, all these interviews are just with journalists that, that they know Streets of Rage by name and that's about it. You're like, how many of these people really have played through these games? enough to know that for one when you say something plays like streets of rage that's a dumb comment because all three games play different from each other there there's three different styles when it comes down to the, the trilogy alone so when you say it plays like streets of rage that's not telling me anything what does that tell us that tells us nothing that tells us it plays like a beat em up <laughs> So when I see these articles, it's just bothering the crap out of me because I don't know if they're just giving these PR answers because they pretty much have to. And, you know, um, it's not like these guys are giving them, like, the hard-boiled questions that they really need to hear. You know, how many times are people going to keep asking, is Adam Hunter going to return? You know they can't answer that. They can't tell you directly Adam Hunter's coming back. They're not going to tell you that, you know. They're not going to tell you... Um, uh, if Mr. X is not dead or not, they're not going to tell you this stuff. But what they can possibly tell you is if they remember that vaulting is in the game. <laughs> what they can answer is, you know, uh, uh, how much of, of the original games are they are they trying to draw inspiration from? You know, uh, maybe they can maybe they can answer stuff like, is this game in the future? Like, is this? I mean, it's a sequel, so I'm just going to assume that it is. Uh, you know, where are these questions? Where are, the, where are the questions about Axel's design? You know, everybody complains about his design, but has anybody asked, okay, well, why did, what was the thought process behind it? You know, uh, is, is, did he go through his stuff? Is he supposed to represent the, the fan base? That's what I think of it. I think Axel re represents the fan base. He's been waiting 25 years for this. Uh, where, whereas everybody else in the crew has moved on and done whatever the fuck, don't, the rest of the crew has moved on and done everything that they've wanted to do. Whereas Axel has just been sitting here waiting for 25 years. He's still in his old clothes. You know, where are these questions? That's the thing that bothers me. Um, so, yeah, when I get in, when I see uh, a guy asking if the cop call is going to be back and all they really say is, oh, well, we're trying to balance the modern and new. Well, that pretty much tells me that either the cop call is going to come back and it's not going to work very well with the system because they're just throwing it back in there for nostalgia sakes, or they're not putting it back in there because they know why the cop call was removed in the first place, and they're not going to tell you that they're not going to remove it because they can't answer that question. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's all I really wanted to get into. Those are the red flags for me. Um, the fact that they keep talking about the Guard Crush engine in Streets of Fury. Streets of Fury is not the only beat em up to exist. Um, and the worst part about it is Streets of Fury and Streets of Rage are two different playstyles entirely. Uh, and and, and that, that, that is a big concern to me because if you guys don't know that 
those are two different play styles. That's like that's pretty much essentially the same Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter are the same game. They're not. You know, it's two different play styles entirely. And the biggest problem is that everybody thinks a beat em up is Double Dragon. Or everybody thinks a beat em up is Final Fight. It's not. Final Fight and Double Dragon are two different styles. Final Fight and Streets of Rage are two different styles. Streets of Fury plays like Guardian Heroes. Guardian Heroes is a completely different style from everything else. So, when somebody says, like, Streets of Fury is the best beat em up to ever exist since, you know, the old games, it's a load of crap. It's a great game in its, in its sense of what it does. I love the fact that it expanded on Gar Guardian Heroes' uh, system and that it worked hard to try to, you know, put things in places like far as fighting mechanics and stuff goes. But it's not Streets of Rage. That's, you know, uh, it plays differently. It's a different style. But anyway, um, yeah, you know, that's that's it. I, I didn't want to I didn't want to ramble too much about this. It's just kind of off the cuff. I'm I'm getting back into making videos for YouTube. Honestly, I just between my condition and uh, uh, kind of dealing with this stupid stint of depression. I, I, you know, depression is like that that stupid uh, guy at your job that you got to keep dealing with every time you go to work, and and you know, you want to slap him, but you, you know you can't. That, that that's what depression is like to me. That guy that just keeps he just keeps bothering you all the time, and you, you you're just like, dude, leave me alone, go away. <laughs> um, but between all that stuff, I've I've just haven't been able to uh, keep everything keep everything in focus like I I've, I've wanted to. But I, I just wanted to get that video out. Um, like I said, I'm still looking forward to the game. Um, I'm looking forward to hopefully doing that interview with the the devs on the team. Because I, I want you guys to actually get to know these guys. Get to know who they are. Because, um, you know, actually that's another concern of mine as well. Like, we don't... Who... Nobody... We don't know these guys. You know, it, this this is not like uh, G-Saurus. Or, uh, you know, G-Saurus, the guy who made the Evolution Engine. And, 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 and uh, who's uh, beat Mania with all the characters. Or, you know... This isn't this guy working on the game. This isn't Bomberlink, the guy who did Streets of Rage remake. Um, these aren't guys that are familiar within the Streets of Rage community. Um, and even even in the uh, game industry, they're not very they're not very familiar either. You know, Lizard Cube and Guard Crush games have only worked on a handful of games. I th I think I think Lizard Cube I actually think Lizard Cube only worked on one or two games. Guard Rush has only worked on one game in general, and and that the only game that they did was a beat 'em up. Um, and then Lizard Cube did the uh, Wonder Boy remake, and that's the only thing I really know about those guys. And then Dot Emu, you know, they brought back Wind Jammers, and they've been working on quite a few other retro titles. So Dot Emu is probably like the the bigger the bigger half of that company that people would probably actually know. Okay, yeah, we know who these guys are. But Lizard Cube and Guard Crush, we don't know a lot about these guys. You know, especially the Streets of Rage community. We, there's, there's not. I mean, these. This isn't a Christian Whitehead situation. So, you know, I'd love to do an interview so you guys can actually get to know who these guys are. You know, what the thought process is behind all this stuff. Because, you know, like I said, I think this game's gonna. I think this game has potential. I think it's gonna come out well. But you know, it's a huge difference between somebody being passionate about the project and what they can actually do. Uh, I mean, like I said, Ben's a cool guy, but. He still has to do with, with, with like the, the whole company has to m make decisions on this game. So it's not going to just be Ben. So Ben can tell me all the things that he wants to tell me in, in the tweets and, and, and like uh, the DMs and, and all that stuff. Like, and I can see his passion, but that doesn't mean that everything that he wants to do is going to come into fruition. So, yeah, I just want to kind of put it out there that, like, you know, that's my concern. My concern is that we're. We're not getting enough info on the gameplay, and it doesn't have to be like direct yes or no answers or anything like that. You know, it could just simply be things like, yeah, we do, we do at least, you know, uh, remember that, you know, uh, how important vaulting and stuff like that is. 
And, you know, yeah, some of this stuff have, have been talked about. They have talked about anime AI from Street to Rage 2. They have talked about how they uh, compare it side to side to the original games to make sure that uh, frames are working the way they should. They've gone into stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not too much concerned as to, you know, them getting things right as far as, like, making it play like a Street to Rage game. Just so much of the fact that the new mechanics, I don't want the new mechanics to ruin that. You know, that's what I mean. I, that's the kind of type of concern that I'm getting, you know. And these interviews are reminding me of a lot of Sonic 4, where the guy just gave a bunch of PR answers about how he's listening to the community and this and that, and then we saw how Sonic 4 turned out. Um, and my biggest fear is that it will end up like Sonic 4. Sonic 4 is not even a bad game. It's just a game that might as well not exist. There, I mean... It's not it's not relevant for being bad or good. It's just there. It's there because of the name and the name alone. And I don't want this to be a game in a series where it's just like, oh well, you know, it happened. And that's it. You know, years from now, nobody's talking about Streets of Rage Four. It, it's as if it almost didn't even happen in the first place. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. You know, I, I want this to be a good game. I want this to be a game that people, you know. Um, get back into the series with and you know hopefully you know encourage more games in the series even if it's a remake of the original trilogy uh, remaster or, or whatever after this you know a mania style game whatever I want this game to kind of be the catalyst for Streets of Rage actually returning not just be a one time thing and then that's it we have Streets of Rage 4 and that's the end of everything <laughs> you know um but yeah, enough of me rambling. Anyway, um, I just wanted to get that out there off my chest, or whatever. Um, um, subscribe. I don't. I don't want to say subscribe to my YouTube. Like I said, I don't, I don't really post things on here. Honestly, I, I might post things in the future. I might do some reviews on stuff. But you know, I'm more focused on Brawls Avenue, Street to Rage Online. So um, yeah, just if you guys haven't subscribed to those channels, then find them: Brawls Avenue and uh, Wood Oak Central. Um, I believe they're both youtube.com slash uh, C slash I don't know I don't know why you can't just be well Brawls Avenue actually is just youtube.com slash Brawls Avenue uh, but Wood Oak Central has that C before the slash or whatever Wood Oak Central uh, but I will be posting more Street to Rage content on the Wood Oak Central channel and then um, I actually going to be now I'm going to be doing some content for Speed Brawl which is an awesome beat em up it's an awesome side scrolling beat em up. It's not a belt scroller. Um, I'm going to be doing content for that on Brawls Avenue, as well as uh, the Takeover and Raging Justice. I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of work to do. You know, um, that, that's that's another reason um, why I was a bit frustrated with the Streets of Rage Four interview thing, is because I actually have a lot of other things to do with other developers for other beat em ups, and you know, and, and these games are really cool. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to ignore these games. <laughs> you know, as much as I love Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage, and I want to cover Streets of Rage 4 just all the way through, I, you know, I, I can't, I can't sit around waiting, trying to uh, constantly set this stuff up when I'm, you know, working with de other developers and trying to help them with their beat em up. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, sorry guys. I, I, you know, I'm glad it's a personal video. I'm just sitting there rambling on. But uh, I, I guess you guys are probably happy to hear from me in general. But yeah, just wanted to let you guys know that's what my concerns are. Uh, I am feeling a little bit better. So um, hopefully more content will be coming through the pipeline. Uh, if you guys want to support me, I actually did open up my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Um I'm going to be posting updates to my uh, Deadly Metropolis project um, as well as pixel art and videos and stuff like that to the Patreon um, as well as well as the Discord so if you guys want to at least just see what I'm up to you know what's going on with me and stuff like that that's a good way that's a good way to uh, keep up with me yeah I, I mean I'm working on my own beat em up as well guys sorry <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's I think that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys even watched this far, I appreciate it. Catch you guys later. Peace.